Today we are gonna write a CyberChef recipe to extract all of the C2s from the smooth operator. In the last video we successfully decrypted the data that is in the certificate of the D3D compiler 47DLL. This is the decrypted part. I called it feed, feed phase decrypted because of the marker that's found inside. So it's usual, let's run strings on that. We can already see there's not only some shell code inside, but also another portable executable file. Also, when briefly checking the strings, we see that here is some download location, which is now not available anymore, um, but at the time, there were a lot of icons that could be downloaded there. Um, we, I got um, the folder of that with a malware sharing site, so we can also look at those icons. Um, by now, there's also a lot of analysis out there. If you're interested in getting a good overview, in my opinion, this is like the, the best mind map on that topic on the infection chain explaining how it all works. So you remember we started with this MSI file, the 3CX desktop app MSI file. We extracted from that the FFmpeg DLL and the D3D compiler DLL and also the legitimate 3CX desktop app AXA. This legitimate file um, loads the malicious FFmpeg DLL and the malicious FFmpeg DLL then extracts the shellcode and the feed phase DLL that we are currently looking at. Um, this is the feed phase DLL. And yeah, that will then download icons from GitHub, which provide the C2 contact data. So C2 URL. Today's topic is um, that we are gonna look into analyzing this decrypted DLL here and write a decryptor, or not, not writing it, but using CyberShep to have a universal decryptor for all those icons, icon files that were found on GitHub. So that way we can extract all of the URLs. At this time, I'm going to use IDA. The reason is I tried this with Binary Ninja and the decrypt portion did not make sense after marking up things. It was just still uh, not making any sense. I can show you that later, but it somehow had trouble with uh, specifically the icon decryption function. So we are going to use either free. That should work for you as well. So let's open up. Oh yeah, no, we still need to extract the DRL from that. That's not a problem. Just scroll down a bit until you reach that point where the MZ starts and you just remove the shellcode from the front and we save this as feed phase DLL. So this is the file we're gonna look at. So there is nothing in the DRL main function that is called from the shellcode is the DRL get class object. This is something you can see if you debug through it or if you just um, check 
the other reports you will see dl get class object it's also the only export so it's something you would look at um anyway so so right there it creates a new thread with um, a function address we are gonna look into this And this is checking the command line arguments that are provided, doing something with the manifest, which we also saw in that overview. Um, so as usual, I'm looking down below a little bit. So that is uh, VSV printf s, something like printf. something like that. Um, this is some library name, so I'm not going to look at it if it's probably not too interesting. Um, this looks interesting and these also look interesting. Yeah. Of course, if you are looking, by the way, the, you could have just from the same data of just looking at the strings of course like this would have been as well possible just um go to the strings view and then search for this github url setup and now we get the github you uh, Ida is a little bit clunky. You have to set up that it shows you all of the strings. So if you go there, then you also find the reference to this, and then you get to the code that references um, the download URL. So we are probably here the GitHub download function, and this is just. V as we V S W print of S again. Some internet stuff. internet connections going on here. We're not interested in that. We actually want to find the function that decrypts something. Again, internet connection. So here we have crypt string to binary, which is responsible for, for instance, base 64 decoding. Wait. Oh, I missed it. Let's go back again. Um, below there is a huge, well, if you see lots of shifts and lots of XORs, it's probably some kind of uh, encryption going on. You don't want to analyze this, actually. And here's a third function. So let's look into this first. So this is takes a string. Um, could be some kind of string decoder. Here's the string. So this is the year. Script string to binary. Let's check the script. String to binary. You see, this is the output value. So here you find the pointer that contains the return sequence of bytes. And we are also interested in the flags because they determine what kind of decoding or decryption it is doing. So um, the flags, it's one in this case, which means it's base 64. Um, I think with M, 
And no, it's not in there. Here. Yes, exactly. That is the correct one. Um, so this will be the raw data that we decoded. So the input is a base 64 string, this one. Then something is going on here, but you see the raw data doesn't have any part in that, so it's not going to change the raw data. Uh, and below that is another function where the raw data is passed inside and the return value is v90, which is here. So I guess this is kind of if that's the return value and the raw data is passed here, um, that this is like the output output buffer of the decoded string, maybe. Let's look into this function. Now we see some um, encryption API functions. So this is bcrypt uh, generate a bcrypt set probably. Okay, so this is um, using AES in GCM mode and that will take, well, it's actually like AES uh, CTR mode, but it also has an authentication tag to check if the message is valid. So this seems to be correct. So this is kind of like the key PVC grid. What else is here? The eight. So we need, we actually need to set the types correctly. Then it should make more sense. Um, this is the bcrypt decrypt function. And the padding info structure is this one. So B bcrypt authenticated cipher mode info. Let's see if Ida has it. Yes. Now we see what those values are. And um, this one is a tag, obviously. Then the tag size is 16. The non size is 12. The non is the same as the IV. Um, and this is the nonce. So that looks good. So here we have actually the, where does this come from? Press Alt. Yeah, if you press Alt and um, the arrows, then you get to the previous or next value. So that, that's the raw data. However, okay. So now we know the second raw data.
the second is not used. So if you press Alt and down, it says pattern not found. So this is an unused value. Same with this one. So that means we do not really care about that. What is sad? that receives the plain text after decryption. So this is the actual return buffer. You wanted to know that, that's still the same. It's also the plain, plain text return buffer. Let's uh, name this, this is the tag. And that's also the same as raw data plus four. Output data length. The secret, this is not used, this is the nonce. after the nonce and other unused value. And after that is the input data. And the length of the input data. So that should work. Now let's gonna check um, where this base64 string comes from. Also this is like decrypt string. So we know that this is going to be the string. Okay, the boss, the one, two, three, four. This is some data buffer. Let's see. Then one, two, three, four data buffer. So pressing Alt and um, arrow down and This is exactly, this is the data from internet read file. Um, so that's the data that is being read from the URL. So anyways, let's, let's take a look at the 
I think we I know enough at this point. Let's take a look at the icons that we have here. So when you check the strings, you see the last string is some base64 string. Um, everything else is just junk, which is normal with, when you have image files, except for some metadata, there's often nothing notable in them. Um, but here at the very end is this, this string. Now, the thing is, we know on part of the encryption algorithm, the decryption algorithm, that is uh, that we use base64 and afterwards is some AES with in GCM mode but we don't know what's happening here and in between those that that that's something I don't want to analyze but then it doesn't seem to affect the key or uh, the data itself so we should just um, debug it and i'm gonna use something that i have from herco a labs um twitch you should watch it he's really good it's very enjoyable let's do that so we're gonna open feedface dr in X64 DBG. Fine. So what's the goal actually right now? The goal is we want to write a, want to create a Cyberchef recipe that can decrypt all of the C2 URLs from the icons of this GitHub repository. And to do that, I want to show you this again. I already know what's happening here. I don't know what algorithm this is. And I know what's happening here in the decrypt B code function. I don't need to know what is here as long as I have the values that come out of it. All that I need is the secret, which is the key and the nonce. Everything else I have available. The tag is extracted from the base 64 raw data. So I can do that, but nonce and secret, I don't know. They come out of this weird function here before that. So I want to break point here. And in order to do that, and in order to not deal with anything else that happens when um, starting this DLL, I'm gonna use a method that I have seen at OA Labs Twitch. So shout out to Sergey. Please watch his Twitch and his YouTube channel. He, you will learn a lot if you do so. And yeah, that's the reason we are going to check this. How does this method work? Well, we are going to start up the feedface.dll until the entry point, then step a little bit further into it. So it builds up everything that's necessary. And then we are going to change the RIP to point to this um, instruction right here, right before um, the call to the decrypt string function. We are going to place a base64 string into RCX and then we're going to step into decrypt string. And right before the um, other decrypt functions are called, I'm going to check what the values of the secret and of the of the nonce. So let's do that. First things you gotta check the preferences here. Make it load on DLL entry and start it. And then you're gonna run it until you are at the DLL entry. And then you should um, just 
move inside a little bit. And maybe that's enough. Now we are going to find the location of decrypt string to do that. Please rebase the, this to feed face DLL. Go to the memory map, you click on feed face DLL, then you can copy the address from here. Copy address, say, uh, segments rebase program and then you can rebase it like that and that way you get the address you want to go to you press ctrlg place the address inside and you should be here where the call is to the decrypt string function. And now we are gonna set the RIP here. And we can now set RCX value to a location that contains our string. For that, you search for some memory that is free currently, that is readable and writable. Say follow and dump. And now you can set the value to the string. How do you get the string? It's in the icons right at the end of them. Just open it in, for instance, in a hex editor, or we just use the console. I think we can just do it like that. So copy this without the dollar sign. Right click, paste. No, but did it do? Binary, added string, now we add in the string, that's better. So we are going to copy this address here, copy address and change our CX. And you should see the string here, then you know that worked. Need this one. So let's try this. And we want to step right until. Was it too far? I think here. You can also find this location here. I named it. I named the decrypt B code. Right. So and the call to that is here. So that's that's the address we are gonna go. And we place our breakpoint right here and run. So we are there. And now all of the values that we need are in our registers. The reason I have this side by side is so I can check on them. So here, you know, the first one is a secret. Gonna place this following dump. So here we have the secret and we can create a recipe in Cybertech.
Let's load up the icon. So we want the string below. We can use regex to do that. Let's go down below. We actually want this to be at the end of the file because it's always at the end and it starts with this. Okay, now I cannot verify if it works. So we are missing few characters there. I think this one. And now we are matching the whole string. So making sure that this is there as well. Let's do it like that. Right, we need to escape it. This looks fine. Now we can use this as this capture group as an output. We have some capture group there. Okay. That means we need this part that this is at the end of the file. We don't want lines. So this is the first part. We got our output. Now we need to decode it from base 64. And <clears throat> I want to have hex to hex. We don't want delimiters. So <clears throat> remember when you see this here, the tag data starts at plus four. We actually, the, the tag data starts at plus four and the input data starts at plus 20. So we don't need the first four bytes and we can just remove them. The way to do this is, um, I think was it done? It's called drop bytes. So that's not correct. Okay, yeah, we need eight. And now we need the tag itself. The tag is a plus four. And the length of the tag was 16, I think, because the other data starts at plus 20, so there's 16 in between them. And I think we also saw this somewhere else. I don't remember anymore. So 16, we gonna grab the tag with register. And that is simply 32. So the register zero now contains our tag, just means we are using 32 characters because those are s represent 16 bytes. The next step is that we decrypt the data and we're gonna drop the tag bytes actually. So we need to drop bytes, the 32 bytes that we just grabbed from here. Let's do 31, see if this is correct. So yeah, um, 83 was the last one. So it should also be the last one there. Right. And now we use AES decrypt. And now we have to enter our values here. Uh, firstly, this is GCM mode. And our IV, that's the same as the nonce, uh, the, where's the tag? Here's the tag. That is the register R zero. We don't have additional authenticated data. We want the output in raw. That sounds good. And now we're going to grab the key and the nonce. The input is in raw. So let's grab the key in the nonce. Here is with the key. 
we need 16 bytes. So you go to binary copy. So, and the IV, that's the nonce, which is here. So this should be the nonce. What I'm missing now is the length of that. Uh, yeah, that was the data. That That's where you find the length of the tag as well. The length of the nonce is 12. And the secret... So anyways, we can, we can grab 12 bytes from here. Yeah, the key length is not correct. Uh, where do I get the correct key length? That actually can only be one of those. 32, I think it should be. Let's get back to the key. I have some sex. <laughs> I need to, uh, 20 hex bytes, which is 32. No, I did. Oh, come on. Binary, copy. Um, I think I messed something up with the IV. Let's check again if I grab the right value. So the month is, oh, I checked this value instead of this. So, Let's grab this value. Yeah, it's so 12 bytes in decimal, binary, copy. And that looks good. Remove null bytes. That looks good. Now we got to check if that also works for the other files. So let's open other files and that works. So I think we can open the whole folder here. It's not working with the whole folder, but it's working if I open them one by one. Um, yeah. So if I open any file like this, it's fine. But if I open the whole folder, it's doing some weird stuff. Hello again. I was not really satisfied with the CyberShep solution simply because it did not work well with extracting the IOCs from a lot of files. The reason that I chose CyberChef in the first place was because it's easily accessible. So it's relatively intuitive to use. So you just search for stuff, drag and drop it. But I would like to convert the same into binary refinery snippet so that the extraction from not so files is easier. It's not that hard. Once you have the CyberChef recipe, doing the same here is easy peasy. So firstly, I, this is not as a, as a binary refinery tutorial, by the way, but uh, I'm, I'm still trying to explain a little bit. The emit command will create a stream out of the file that I give it. And then with the pipe, you basically pipe the stream to the next command for binary refinery. And peak will just display part of the contents. So what we want to do now is carve the base64 string. And I give it a minimum length of 10. So this is our string that worked well. And now we want to decode this. 
and we want to use this for AES. Let me look up the way to use AES. So <clears throat> minus I is the IV, minus M is the mode. And we need that both. So mode is PCM. The rest we have it here. So let's X put the IV somewhere. Just um that we will replace the new line the spaces. So If I put H in front, it interprets it as hex. And now I also need the key, which is a positional argument. And of course it doesn't work because we did not calculate it on the data, but on the whole base 64 um, decoded data. So we just snip Yeah, that worked. <clears throat> Um, the snip basically uses Python syntax and I told it to start at uh, byte 20 since the other bytes were not the relevant data. And now I want to remove the zeros from that. I think that should work. Yes. So that's good. And now we want to do the same on all of the files in the folder. And for that, we can use EF and then we need to open a frame for every file so that every file gets a separate stream. Yes, that's it. Pretty quick once we found out how, and just in case you want to print the file name alongside, you can use cm. So, and then you say path, and then um, the empty brackets are the decoded data. So, and that is how you can extract the IOCs from all of the files in the folder. By the way, if you want a Python snippet, there is one from Volexity blog. They have a link to their GitHub repo where they created this snippet. That is the one. Um, their icon decoder. And um, yeah, so if you want something like that, you can use that, but yeah, that's it. Just uh, as a side note on uh, the tools that I used this time, um, I really like Binary Ninja. It has such a good feel to it and it improved a lot over the last month. Um, I feel like they, they really listen to um, reverses and what they need. Uh, in contrast to that, IDA feels always very clunky, very, um, in German, we would say umständlich. So I don't know, but on th at the same time, it was really frustrating this time because the decompiler showed me something that just wasn't really true. It didn't make sense. And um, also I had one instance where I couldn't save my binary ninja file. It would just, um, it would just crash binary ninja and all of my changes were gone as soon as I saved it. Um, that is, oh no, that that's a no, no. Um, 
because if my work from hours and hours of reversing is gone, this is really something that should never happen. There should at least be some like backup mechanism. Ha, ah, I'm I'm hoping very much um that this is gonna be improved in the future. I like using the tool. I just want to use it for you know, for using it. Um uh, yeah, that's it for <laughs> That's it for today, so um, see ya. <laughs>